Hello everyone, welcome to chapter 7. In this chapter we want to talk about uh, finding the cost of the project. Uh, in the earlier chapters we talked about uh, how to have a general budget of the project which we develop either in the project charter or the, in the proposal or so on. So here in this chapter we want to talk about how to find and determine the budget for each work group or task. So we have different resources that we need to use for project. Uh, this includes the laborers, materials, and so on. So we have to determine these resources and the quantity of the resources that we want to use. For example, how many laborers and what, um, and the rate of the payment for the laborers, the materials, the equipment, and the facilities that we want to use. Facilities uh, are some places that we need to use for the project. For example, we may need to rent some space to keep our facilities, uh, keep our resources or equipment over there. Sometimes we may need to have a, some, uh, some subcontractors that uh, we are asking to do the, some portion of the project for us. Also, we need to consider the travel cost if there is a required travel for the project we need to include this and also a little uh, reserve and the management reserve for the project that uh, we cover the unpredicted unpredicted costs for the project so most of the time uh, we need to have a person that is expert in the work group and ask for prediction for the cost of the project the same way that we did for the project duration uh, we assign each of the work groups to a person or the organization or the some uh, department that they have uh, experience in this work group and then they can uh, predicate the time and the cost that the work activity needs so this assignment brings some, bring them some responsibility and also this estimation should be realistic and reasonable. Uh, it should not be optimistic or too optimistic. It should be really uh, based on the fact and the reason. They may check the historical data of the projects and uh, try to have a better estimation of the cost of the project. So this is an example of the project that we worked on. It's a consumer market study project and we have four different type of the cost. We have the labor rate uh, and the number of days that they work and uh, we have computed the labor cost. Then we have the material cost and uh, travel cost. So in total we have three type of the cost for this project and we at the last column on the right side we have the total cost for each of these activities and at the end uh, the, uh, the total for uh, entire project so $339,600 is the total of the cost for this project that uh, we need to spend so this is a simple example and uh, we will talk in the Microsoft Act, Microsoft project how you determine and add the different kind of the, um, cost to each activity. Also this is another example of the project. This is a project uh, that uh, shows how much money, how much budget is assigned for each work group. So you can see there is a WBS of the project and the, the whole project is going to take 600,000 and then we have a work, bre bre work breakdown structure and for each work group we have the cost that we need for example for the first box we need the, on the left side we need $100,000 and then for the rest of the box you can find the, for the rest of the work group or the Activities you can see the costs associated with this uh, 
mm, project so if you add all of these boxes all of, add some of all of this uh, work group work breakdown structure uh, and add them up you can uh, find this uh, this total six hundred thousand dollars this is another simple project. It has three activities. Activity number one is a design one. Activity number two is the building and activity number three is installing and testing the machine that we want to use in the packaging uh, project. This is a very simple project and it's expected that the first activity takes four days, the next one takes six days and the last activity is going to take two days. And you can see the work breakdown structure of this project, WBS of this project, it's very simple. We have three work groups, design, build, and install and test. And the cost associated with each of these uh, work group is determined. So you can see design is going to take 24,000, build is going to take 60,000, and install and test is going to take take. Uh, 16,000 and you if add them up is going to take 100,000 so one thing uh, that is very useful is a cumulative budget cost so in the cumulative budget cost you distribute you find for each budget for each task the budget that they want so you add all of the budget and you get the total budget cost of the project. So TBC of the project is the total amount of the money that the sponsor wants to spend on the project. But uh, we need to know the more detail about the money that we are spending on the project. So there is a graph, we call it cumulative budget cost, that represents how much money we are going to spend based on the time phase of the project. So in this, uh, for example, in this project of the machinery that is going to take 12 months, 12 weeks, for each of this, uh, there is a one column which is a TBC, total budget cost of each activity, and then the total for the project which is uh, 100. Then uh, you can see uh, for the first activity, the design. Uh, the cost that uh, we are going to spend based on each week is represented. For example, in week one, we are going to spend four dollars or four thousand dollars. Then in the second week, we are going to spend another four thousand, and so on. So, for each of the activities, uh, we write it down the cost that we are, the money that we are going to spend, and then at the end, we add them up. So. The second, the last line should represent the cumulative, but the line on top of it is represent the total. So we add all the cost of the activities that we are going to spend. Then at the last line, we add the cumulative of this uh, uh, cost. So for example, in week one, we have four dollars just for activity one for activity design then the total becomes four and added and the cumulative cost is going to be four dollars now this in the week two we have just four dollars for activity one and then we had four dollars we spent four dollars in week one so four plus four becomes eight dollars and so on. So we compute the total and the cumulative of the cost. Then we represent this uh, graph uh, as a time phase. So, for example, in week number one, we spent four dollars. So you can plot this point on the graph. Then on the week two, we spent eight dollars. Week three, sixteen dollars, and so on. So you plot these points on the graph, and you create the cumulative budget cost so uh, this budget represent how much this graph represent how much budget we are going to spend in which week and uh, basically at the end of the project we are going to meet the total budget cost otherwise we have to revise the plan 
and adjust the budget that we have. So this should be met. Uh, this should be meet the total budget cost. Also, we have another concept: the concept of the actual budget. So actual cost. This actual cost means how much we really spend on the project. So again, this is uh, this is a measure that how much we are spending on the project. To find this, you need to have a data collection. For this purpose, you may use some software, some uh, procedures that uh, you keep all the records of the spending and uh, at the end of the month or in the middle of the month, you calculate all the spended monies all the expended cost on the project and then compare the progress of the project for example in let's say we are in week eight for example at the end of the week eight for the project of the packing machine we have uh, planned sixty four thousand dollars at the end of uh, at the end of the week eight but it turns out that uh, uh, sorry the plan cost was four Sixty-four thousand dollars, and uh, it turns out that the actual cost that we are spending on the project is sixty-eight. So, if you plot these two, you can see there is a gap between the cumulative bu budgeted cost and the cumulative actual cost. So, we are, we are spending more than planned. So, this is a, a very concerning point that we have to take care of that either by uh, corrective actions or uh, other kind of uh, revising on the project. Uh, so if you just compare this actual cost by total budgeted cost by this start, you can see uh, you are not going to see any concern until the end of the project because this point is always is going to be less than uh, total budgeted cost. So but this care provides you a very good understanding about the money that we are spending on each activity of the project based on the time of the progress of the project. And there is a one more concept in the project. When we spend money, uh, we get some value. So, uh, for example, uh, assume there is a 10 similar rooms that we want to paint and the total budget that we have for this project is 2000 basically uh, for each room we have 200 dollars let's say at day five we spend 1000 dollars and then we just print uh, painted three rooms so we spent half the half of the budget on three rooms so if we uh, consider uh, but it should be six hundred dollars because we just painted three rooms and each rooms each room has three two hundred dollars so it becomes six hundred that means we are expended more than uh, the value that uh, the project has basically we are spending more money on less job so if we spend ten thousand one thousand dollars we should have painted at least five rooms so the value of this work the value of one thousand dollars that we have right now is just six hundred so but using one thousand dollar we did a job that worth six hundred so this is a definition of the value in the project also we have the same concept that uh, based on the money that we have spent we measure how much work we have done so let's say uh, in the project of the machinery this is a percentage of the work in project uh, we use a percentage for example let's say uh, we have a budget we measure the percentage of the budget then we measure the percentage of the progress of the job and then 
if we multiply the percent of the progress of the job and multiply by the total budget budgeted cost and then we compare the this value by the actual cost that we have uh, spent it. so this is a way that we can apply whether the money that we actually spent has a higher value than uh, the job that we have done or not so this is a way that we do the comparison in the project let's say uh, let's get back to the project management project the packaging machine project and then this is a percentage of the progress of each job each work group of the project based on the week so the design had 10 percent progress in week one and it has gradually increased until we got by the end week eight that is 100 percent now the second work group built is the job that has a 50 percent on week eight and install is zero so if you multiply whatever you has you have spent it on this project then uh, you can add the money so the design has for example 24,000 so if you multiply this number by the progress rate of the this job for the first week you get 2.4 then for the end you get to uh, 24 because you are multiplying by 100 now consider the second work group uh, built so you multiply this number by the progress of the task so you multiply 6 by 5 becomes uh, 60 by 5 becomes 30 this is 5 percent so remember now again we have the 60 multiplied by 50 percent becomes 30 dollars so 30 thousand dollars and then you add all of this cost together so this is is the actual value that you got for the doing a job so you did you had sixty thousand dollar for this job you did thirty percent of the task you did fifty percent of the task so the value of this task is thirty dollars and then add them up all of this cost and compute the cumulative and plot this value the same way that we did for the cumulative budget cumulative actual cost and now we have a new curve it is a cumulative earn value the cumulative the cumulative actual cost should be uh, equal to the cumulative budget cost that means it's better overlap the blue line that we have also the cumulative value should be at least on the top of the this dark blue line which is represented the cumulative budgeted cost so cbc all of this value should be overlap on the ideal situation now once we have a deviation we have spent the actual higher cost we are we have spent it higher than the planned cost also the value that we got is less than what we have planned here there is a situation that we need to have some corrective actions the corrective actions mean may depending on the situation we may for example extend the time period we may revise the budget of the project or we may at the last resort we may ask the extension for the project budget but we will talk more about the uh, this act corrective actions later in their especially in their project risk management so we have three curves so far the cumulative budget cost we have the cumulative actual cost and the cumulative earned value now so we have we talk total budget cost cumulative budget cost cumulative actual cost and cumulative earned value so these are the parameters that perform shows the performance of the project also we have some indicators some performance indicators that we can measure and easily identify the project progress one of these performance we call cost performance which is a 
dividing the cumulative earned value over the cumulative actual cost so this CPI or cost performance index is a measure that how efficient is the cost that we are spending on the project let's say in the previous example at the end of the week 8 we spent 64,000 we had a plan of the 64,000 and we spent 68,000 so 4,000 extra and then the value that we got the earned value was 54,000 so the cumulative earned value was 54,000 cumulative actual cost for was 68,000 if we divide these two numbers together so 54,000 divided by 68,000 we got 79 0.79 percent so this means that for every one dollars that we actually spend on the project we just got 79 cents earned back so we are uh, wasting 21 cents per each dollar that we are spending on the project so here there is a problem that we had to investigate and see what's the problem uh, in the project process that we have also we have one another version uh, another performance we call cost variance in the cost variance we measure the difference between the cumulative earn value and the cumulative actual cost so in the previous one it was dividing these two but now we are subtracting this one cumulative earned value minus cumulative actual value and we call this as a cost variance so the cost variance should be uh, if the cost variance is negative then that's we have problem remember this for the previous example this was 54,000 and the actual was uh, 68,000 so the difference is minus 14,000 so still we have a big gap and that's the negative so this represent that the value of the work that we have done in but uh, in the eight weeks of the project is 14,000 less than the amount of the money that we have spent so there is a big gap and we have this indicates that something is wrong with the project also we have one more way that we can estimate if we go if we continue this <coughs> performance what's going to be the final cost of the project so there is some methods that we can apply and uh, forecast the cost of the project at the end of the project one way is we have basically three different three different methods the first one is uh, we divide the total budget on the cost by the CPI, the cost performance index. The cost performance index is itself is a CEV, <coughs> cumulative earned value divided by cumulative actual, by actual cost. The next one is a cumulative actual cost plus the difference between the total budget cost and the total earned value so if this is zero then the <coughs> the forecasted is going to be the cumulative actual cost there is one more method that we get the whatever we have spent so far plus re-estimate the remaining work so this is very um, time consuming part you have to go through all the activities and compute the cost that they have they needed for the project also we have another performance index uh, which is uh, we call it total cost performance index it's the difference between the total budget cost um, uh, and the cumulative earned value divided by total budget cost over the total cumulative actual cost so 
in this one we measure uh, what is our cumulative earn value and what is the total budget that we have and the difference be between these two values here we measure how much money we have spent so far and how much we want to we need to spend so the difference between these two the difference between the earn value and the total budget cost is divided by the <clears throat> total money that we have spent and the total money that we have for the project so this is a another measure that indicates how well is the project is doing so example is that again the packaging machine project we want to estimate the cost at the completion of the project at the end of the week <coughs> At the end of the week 8, we have $64,000 as a budget, then we spent $68,000, then the earned value was $54,000. So if we list this information, we have uh, earned value of the $54,000, actual cost of the $68,000, and the cumulative performance, cost performance index was 79%. And the total total budget cost is one hundred thousand dollars. Then the forecasted estimated cost at the completion is uh, total budget cost over the CPI. So CPI is a point seven nine because it's a less than one is going to increase this value. So the cost that we estimate is going to be a lot more than the cost of the project that we have determined at the beginning of the project now you can see using this equation we got $126,000 so you are spending almost $27,000 on the project more than uh, what we have planned at the, at the beginning now using another method using the Second method, uh, you can see that uh, we got $114,000 and still uh, we have to spend more on the project to finish the project. Uh, if we compute the total cumulative, total cumulative perform, total cost performance index, you can see that we got 1.44. So that means <coughs> The, the difference between the total budget cost and earned value is much higher than the actual cost that we have spent. So we have spent more, we are uh, getting to the total budget cost, but the difference between these two is uh, high. So this value should be 1 or less than 1. The ideal is 1 and uh, the better it's better to have a less than one if possible so here it's over one that's the problem that we have and you can see it's almost close to 1.5 so these are indication that uh, we are behind in terms of the earned value and we are spending a lot of money and the value that we got is not uh, meeting the money that we have spent so we need to do some correction corrective action on the project before it's getting late so this is end of the lecture and thank you